Welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and this is a response to a question in the comments for one of my videos on how to delete blank rows. We're going to do a slight variation on that. Today, we'll simply clear the data within the row if at least one cell in that row is blank. So first of all, thank you for the question. I will encourage others to ask questions related to my videos as well. This does help me understand the requirements of my audience better and also helps me plan our future videos. We'll go through the answers to this video shortly. What I'll first do is quickly spell out my understanding of the question. So in the format of pseudocode, if there exists at least one blank cell in a row, then blank out the contents in that row. So we're not going to delete the row, just the data in it. We will go through three techniques. Let's look at the first one, which is special cells. So this is our data in sheet one. We just want to blank out the rows with empty cells that are highlighted in yellow. So the objective of our macro will be to blank out these four rows. Okay, let's go to the VB editor, create a sub, create a worksheet variable and assign it to sheet one. We will use the special cells method to grab all the blank cells in our used range. So special cells is a method of cells object. And we want to detect the blank cells in our range. So we'll choose this option here, type blanks. And once we've done this, we can clear out the contents within the rows in which each blank cell is situated. So for each cell that is located, we will bring up its entire row. And what are we going to do with it? We will clear the contents. This will blank out the data within the row. And if you want to delete the formatting as well, we could use the dot clear method. And if you want to delete the row, we would just use the delete method, which we did in the last video where we deleted the blank rows. But for now, we will just use clear contents. Let's run this and see what we get. Run. Great. Each row with blank cells has been blanked out. One thing to note here is that if there is no blank cell within the use range of the worksheet, this macro will throw an error. So to avoid that, let's put a resume next statement before the special cells method to skip over it if there is an error. So on error, we will resume next and we'll put a go to zero statement afterwards to revert back to normal error handling. And that's it for special cells. The drawback here is that it will not detect cells with formulas that return a blank value. For example, in this data set, this cell has a formula which returns a blank value if the condition is not met. Special cells will not blank this row out. To tackle this, we need a for loop or a for each loop. Let's look at that next. Okay, so let's look at the for each loop now. Create a sub, create a worksheet variable. The for each loop will loop through each object in a collection of objects. Here, we want to loop through each individual cell within the use range in our worksheet. Let's declare a range variable to represent each cell that will be looped over. Next, let's create the loop. So for each cell, within the use range of a worksheet. And what are we going to check for? Whether the value in the cell is blank. And if this condition is true, we can go ahead and clear the contents within the row. So the row index is just one because the cell just has one row. Great, that's it. Let's run that sub over this data set, which includes blank values from formulas. Let's run this. Come to our worksheet. Awesome. All our rows with blank values have been cleared out. And one more thing to note out here. The for each loop will loop through each column in the first row before it moves to the next row. So if there is more than one blank cell in a row, the code will clear out the row when it reaches the first blank cell in the row. And we don't need to search for the next blank cell in the same row because that will not achieve anything. The row has already been blanked out, but we really can't do this modification easily using a for each loop. So moving on to the third technique. And finally, we look at the for loop. The for loop is a simple and elegant way to solve such an issue. We will build a nested for loop. The outer loop will loop over the rows 
and for each row the inner loop will loop over the columns let's create a sub create the worksheet variable let's find the last row and last column to loop over for this we will just count the rows and columns within the use range so the last row is the row number of the last row in the use range similarly we can find the last column as well let's dim two iteration variables for each loop first we'll create the outer loop and then the inner loop so we'll loop from the second row which is where the data begins through to the last row and for the column we we'll loop from the first column to the last column. Now we can check if each cell is blank or not. So the position of the current cell has the row index as i and the column index as j. So if this cell is blank, then we'll clear the contents in that row. Okay, so let's run this over our data set. Awesome, this achieves the same result. Now for the issue that we discussed during the for each loop, if we find one blank cell within a row, we do not want to search for the next column. We should just skip to the next row. For that, once we clear the contents in the row, we'll skip to this line label and we'll place the line label just before we skip to the next row. Great. Let's run this to check if there are any bugs. And as expected, it ran smoothly. Awesome. And that's how you blank out the entire row if at least one cell within that row is blank. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe. Thanks and see you in the next one.